Hey everyone, welcome back to Sets Art. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to draw a 3D text illustration in isometric style. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's start by typing some text. It doesn't matter what the text is or what the font is, that's up to you. So I'm just gonna go with the sans serif and I will just make it bold. Now this object is a text and if I want to separate these letters, I cannot do it if it's text. So I will select this and go to path and click object to path. Now you can see here uh, it says group of four objects. So all I have to do is go to object and click on the ungroup. Now we have all the letters separated and we can proceed with this one. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform each of these letter in different planes of isometry. So I'm going to use SSR method for that. If you haven't seen that video, then I recommend you go and check that video because I have explained everything in that. So first I will select the C letter, go to object, click transform. And the first step is to scale it by 86.602%. Click apply. In fact, I'm going to need to scale everything. So I will just select all the letters and scale by 86.602%. Now I'll select the C letter again, go to uh, skew. So I'm planning to transform this into top plane so I can skew it in any one direction and then rotate it in the same one. So 30, 30 and there we have our C in the top plane. Then this one I want to uh, transform it in left plane. So I'll click apply uh, like 30, 30 degrees skew and then rotate it in the opposite direction now instead of doing same thing again for this one i will just select this and press ctrl d to duplicate and then just flip it horizontally so here we have another o in right plane and then i'm gonna repeat the same process for l and i will transform this again in top plane so minus 30 and minus 30 you know what uh, I will just delete this O because once I'm done with this O like completely I can just duplicate this and flip it horizontally so yeah now I'm gonna give this three letters depth so let's say if uh, let's say each, if you want to give each letter of uh, depth of 50 pixels, let's see how it will look. So press Ctrl D on the keyboard and now we have a duplicate C. So go to move and let's see 50 pixel vertical movement. Mm, no, I think I should increase it. So I will try 100. Okay, that seems fine. Now I can do same with L. So I'll press Ctrl D and duplicate this. So we have another L here and then I will move the duplicated object 100 uh, by 100 pixels vertically. Now this we could do because these two uh, were in top plane, but we cannot do the same for this O and the reason is this is in left plane so if we have to move this by 50 pixels it will be in this direction I mean by 30 degree wait let me show you so yeah it will be in this direction which is uh, 30 degree from horizontal plane so that we will do later on so first I will change the color of this C so we can see what's going on. Next, uh, I will bring the vertical guidelines to the corners and snap it 
to the corners if you if, if it's not happening in your case then just go here and make sure that your snap cusp node is turned on and also make sure that the lower C is snapped to the vertical guideline in this case it's it is so bring another one and snap it to this corner then bring another one and make sure it touches the C Okay, now select the Bezier tool and just connect the corners and make sure that you cover this white area. Then press T on the keyboard and give it the color of background. So and then lower that object okay now here is uh, one more thing like let's see if you want different color here and different color here so it won't uh, it won't be possible in this current scenario because as you can see if i change the color it changes for everything so if you want to keep this separate so then what you can do is just select this c press ctrl d so you can duplicate it and then press shift key on the keyboard and select the lower object go to path and click division now you have a separate object here so now you can give this one a different color and this one also and that's how to do that by the way this newly created object has a stroke so i'm just gonna remove it okay so let's select the bezier tool again and make another shape here and this time I will give it color of this object and then send uh, send it to back and then repeat the process for this one and I will get rid of the stroke band same for this one Now we can delete this vertical guidelines. Now if you see any anomalies anywhere, so you can just fix that by using node tool. alright so our C letter is ready so I'm just gonna change the color to some decent one let's try this one okay okay now let's work with the O so if you remember we have set our depth of each letter as 100 pixels so we have to do the same for O so for that I'm gonna use Exonometric grids. So go to grids, select exonometric grids, click new. So we want depth of 100 pixels. So first select the unit as pixels and spacing in Y. Let's set it to 20. So in that way, five grids will give me a width of 100 pixels. So press enter and now let's zoom in I will once again change color of this over to something else and press ctrl D to duplicate and give it some different color now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna align this O to 
any one grid line at the origin you can see here this one and then I'm gonna align the other one at origin which is five units away that's exactly 100 pixels so now we can and make a line and press ctrl d and just give it this color then send it back send it to the back and just get rid of the strokes now i'm going to repeat the same process for the bottom one but you can see it's not aligned so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select all three objects so i can move everything and align this orange one with okay wait grid intersection is bothering me so i'll turn it off for a second and then align the bottom with one of the origins and by origin i mean the intersection of major grid lines so once the outer edge is touching the intersection i can go and turn back the snap on and draw another line like this then press ctrl d and give it the color of background then remove the strokes and send it to back so now what i've not now what i just have to do is just cover this gap so i will just randomly draw a shape oops it went outside okay then press ctrl d and give the color of the background and send it to back now once again if you want uh, another color for this inner 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 shape then press ctrl d for this one select the shape at the background and go to path and click division now we have this separate so i can give it some other color right now i'm just giving random colors so it's it's gonna look ugly but we can fix that later on so the only thing that's left now is just cover this gap then press ctrl d and select this remove the strokes and send it to back so in this way our ugly looking o letter is complete in the left plane so i can just get rid of the grids because i don't i don't need them anymore so just click remove and i can transform this entire shape into right plane just by pressing ctrl d and then flipping it horizontally now let's repeat the same process for l so i'll just change the color first then press ctrl d to duplicate and select the background object go to path click division now we have inner surface separated so click here and bring vertical guidelines and select bezier pen and make each surface so just connect the corners
same for this one let's change the color first i know my coloring is not making any sense but this tutorial is not about the colors you can change them i am just showing you the process so here we go our l is also complete so you can repeat this process for any letters and you can turn your name or any text into isometric illustration so hope you enjoyed this tutorial and stay tuned because i'm gonna post a lot more in future so see you in the next video have a good day